Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the video series on Central Drug Inspector Question Paper Answer Explanation. In this video, I will explain uh, medicinal chemistry related questions. Let us see the questions first. The first one is, chemical structure of timolol has which of the following heterocycles? Now understand how the questions are being tested. See, uh, in a structure, they, are, they will either check a particular functional group or they will ask regarding heterocyclic rings. Now, so the question is about you need to find out what are the heterocycles present in timolol. Options given are morpholine, thiodiazole, morpholine, triazole, piperidine, imidazole, pyridine, morpholine. Now, you need to understand certain things. Most of the drugs names are derived according to their chemical structures. You, you take a, the generic name of the drug, it gives some hints about chemical structure. Take in the same case, uh, timolol is a beta blocker, right? <clears throat> Propranolol. It has got isopropyl group and propanol, hence it is called as propranol. Uh, pindolol, it has got an indole ring, so pindolol. Nadolol, naphthalene ring is there. So, from the drug name itself, you can take the uh, hints. Now, timolol, the reason why it is called as T-mol all means, see, O A level ends with all beta blockers. Now, T indicates it has got a ring thiodiazole. Mo indicates it has got a ring morpholine. So the answer is option A, it contains morpholine and thiodiazole. You can see the structure. <clears throat> so whenever you read about a drug, think about how it, you can relate it to the structure. It is always related to structure. Aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid, paracetamol, the name itself will tell you what is the structure you have. Ibuprofen, again, the name tells you what kind of groups you have. So this is how you need to read about structures. It's not a uh, big problem. Okay. So the answer is morpholine and thiodiazole. Look at the next question. This is related to synthesis one. Now, benzhydryl bromide is the starting material for the synthesis of. So, they have given a starting material and you need to find out what is the end product is. Options given are diphenhydramine, diclofenac, diphenylhydantoin, diperidamol. Again, this is a structure related one. Now, we need to understand certain drugs. We need to know the structures of the drug. Diphenhydramine, if you see the drug, it has got a diphenyl methoxy group. In another side, it has got a dimethyl amino ethane group is there. So both of them will combine and you get diphenyl hydramine. So what is one side you have diphenyl methoxy group is there. Now what is the question asked? Benzhydryl bromide means two, two phenyl groups, a methyl group and a bromide. That is called as benzhydryl bromide. Look at the structure. So when you learn about the structure, you need to think like this. Uh, in medicinal chemistry, it is called as retrosynthesis. You know the final structure, break it into pieces and try to attach it. Look at the synthesis. Benzhydryl bromide is taken and it is reacted with dimethyl amino ethanol. You have a bromide is there, you have an alcohol is there. A classic example of nucleophilic substitution reaction by molecular. Bromide is a good leaving group. It goes away, creates <coughs> carbon with a positive charge. Alcohol forms O minus group. So simultaneously good leaving group goes and this O minus attacks on the carbon. It comes, it becomes an SN2 reaction and that results in diphenyl hydramine. So, this benzhydryl bromide is required for the synthesis of diphenyl hydramine. So, again, for synthesis also, if you learn like this, by, by thinking, just learn the final structure. Think about how can it be made by breaking into pieces and, and what, what do you need to have. Remember, in synthesis, the classic rule is a positive charged species reacts with a negative charged species. Carbon bromide is there. The bromine goes away with electrons. So, carbon forms a positive charge. Here, this alcohol forms O minus. The positively charged carbon plus reacts with negatively charged O minus and forms a bond. That is what results in diphenhydramine. See, see synthesis is simple when you when you apply all these logics. Okay. So the answer is option A. Now let's go to the next question. This is related to metabolism. One. <clears throat> Phenobarbitone is the active metabolite of. Examples given are phenytoin, primidone, phenoxybenzamine, phenylephrine. Now phenobarbitone, phenytoin, primidone are drugs to treat epilepsy. Now, primidone is a, a drug which undergoes metabolism oxidation and results in two active metabolites. One of the active metabolites is phenobarbitone. Look at the structures. It is an oxidative process. Again, metabolism, certain drugs will get bioactivated. That means after metabolism, they release an active metabolite. So we need to learn such kind of things. So one of the classic example is primidone, which gives phenobarbitone. Both of them can be used to treat epilepsy. This is what is called as bioactivation. After metabolism, the metabolite also shows activity. Now the next question this is a simple one. Which of the following is an example of aminoglycoside antibody? Examples given are streptomycin, clavulanic acid, cefachlor, azithromycin. So this is classical uh, classification related question. Now 
See, amino glycosides, the name indicates you have glycosidic bond is there with amino sugars. Example is streptomycin. Streptomycin, amicacin, canamycin, uh, all these are example for amino glycosides. Now, clavulanic acid is an penicillinase uh, enzyme inhibitor, <clears throat> beta-lactamase enzyme inhibitor, but still chemically it contains a beta-lactam ring. Cephachlor again, beta-lactam ring one. Ajithromycin related to macrolide, a big ring is there, 15 atom containing big ring is there, hence it is considered as a macrolide. Ajithromycin is one of the examples. So this is about medicinal chemistry questions. Uh, uh, I hope this is useful. All the best.